What's up, guys? How you doing? Man, somebody told me the crowd was shockingly white. <laughs> they were right. <laughs> and it was a white guy who said it, so you know it was real. Black people, what you doing over there? They're like, we're with white people. All right, keep it moving. Keep it moving. <laughs> I always find myself in weird situations. I travel a lot for comedy. I was in New Jersey recently. And uh, you know how you have a negative stereotype about a place, and you go, and you see it, and you go, oh, I was wrong. That's not what happened to me in New Jersey. <laughs> I was right. Started the moment I got there, I got to the, air, to the hotel, checked in, got on the elevator. This white dad and his two teenage daughters got in the elevator, and we're standing on the elevator, and one of the teenage daughters turns to her dad and goes, Dad, what room are we staying in? And the dad looked over at me, and looked at her and was like. <laughs> but she didn't get it. She's like, Dad, Dad, Dad. You know how young white girls are. Dad, 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 what room are we staying in? And he was like, sixth floor. I know the floor, but what room? <laughs> Six forty. And I was like, okay, stop, everybody. <laughs> First of all, young lady, let me explain. Your dad doesn't want to say what room you're staying in in front of a strange Negro he doesn't know. <laughs> so just calm down. You'll be there in a second. Also, don't worry. I cracked the code. I know you're staying in room 640. <laughs> my show gets over at midnight. I'll see you at 1230. <laughs> and I'm bringing all my rowdy Negro friends. Are you ready for some Negroes? <laughs> we wouldn't do anything. We'd just be like, ah! Man, these Negroes are loud and rowdy. <laughs> I don't even know what crime he was afraid of. <laughs> if he knows what room we're staying in, he'll order us room service and we'll eat it or not. I don't know. <laughs> this is funny, man. Travel around a lot. I was in uh, Madison, Wisconsin last year. W yes. I think that's the birthplace of white people. <laughs> <laughs> I think they must bubble out of the ground at like a spring there. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> they come out with tuna noodle casserole. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Super friendly. It was fun. I had a good time there. I went to this political rally while I was there and I heard uh, Cornell West speak. You might know who Cornell West is? Yeah. It was great. Thank you, four people. I'll keep it going for these four people. <laughs> You'll find this joke very funny. Everybody else, put your head on the tables. Uh, no, it was great. I saw him speak. He's a black reverend. He's an incredible black leader. Afterwards, I walked around talking to people. I was all fired up about the thing. And people kept walking up to me and being polite and thanking me for coming. And they kept thanking me for coming. <laughs> then finally, one woman got real aggressive. Thank you. Thank you for coming. This is so important. It's like, oh, man, these white people think I'm Cornell West. <laughs> And I'm not. That's weirdly insulting to both of us. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, he's like, ah. Oh. And that's not the only time stuff like that has happened to me, even in major cities. I live in San Francisco. I was in San Francisco. I went to lunch with a friend of mine. This waitress was giving us really great service, being kind of flirty with me. I was like, oh, somebody's been to a Negro's YouTube page. <laughs> I got a video with almost 400 views. It's the right 400. And the next day I leave and I come back, I leave and I get a text message from my friend, you won't believe what happened when I went back today to that same restaurant. I said, what? She said, how do you know the lead singer from The Roots? <laughs> okay, that's screwed up for a lot of reasons. One, The Roots don't have a lead singer. They're a rap group. They have a lead rapper. His name's Black Thought. He's a little tiny dude where his hats doesn't look like me. I think she thought I was Questlove, the dude who sits in the back, got a big afro. Some people are like, yeah, no, I don't look like him. You know how I know that? Because I don't look like him, all right? <laughs> it's a very complicated mathematic equation. Here's what I'm saying. The only thing I have in common with both Cornell West and Questlove is that we all got big nappy afros. And I just want to say this to the white people in the room. More than one black person can have a nappy afro at one time, all right? <laughs> We don't apportion it out at the black guy meeting. Who needs a nappy afro this week? Questlove's like, I need it all, man. <laughs> More than one black guy can have a nappy afro. What would you have done in the 70s? I see the Jackson 5 everywhere. <laughs> and plus, I don't get thinking somebody is anybody other than who they are in the 21st century. 
it made sense like 10, 15 years ago. You could get confused where you have, I think that might be the guy, but now there should be a series of stopgap measures before it comes out here. <laughs> and right before it gets here, you, sh you shouldn't say anything. You know why? Because you have a device in your pocket that con contains all the information from the history of the world, and you can search it by images. You can be like, hey, Google, is that the lead singer of The Roots? And Google will be like, no, you're a racist. <laughs> Like, thanks, Google. You're welcome, racist. <laughs> Man, elections coming up. You guys excited about the presidential election? One person? Great. And this is Chicago. Brock's going to win, no question. Brock, you got one person. I am voting for Brock, not for the reason you expect. I'm doing it because he's black, all right? <laughs> you had me at Negro. Yeah, that's right. That's good. Yeah, I, I like Brock. I feel. I mean, I like Brock. I used to be in love with Brock, but I don't. I just like him now. Like it used to be, Brock could call me up at three in the morning and be like, "Come over right now." I'd be like, "Okay." <laughs> but now he calls me at three. Mm -mm, you call me on Wednesday for a Friday date. <laughs> I have read the rules. You know, but it's like I like Brock. I, I feel sorry for that dude because he gets all the regular criticism every president gets and deserves. They mean you become president, you suck at your job. That's just how it works. You suck. <laughs> you think you hope to become president? I hope I can win the presidency. No, you're not winning the presidency. Becoming president in this country is like buying a car as is off the internet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and whatever's wrong with the car before you bought it, it's your fault now. <laughs> and the last dude who owned the America car left it stuck on the highway <laughs> facing the wrong direction <laughs> with no tires and took the steering wheel with him. <laughs> now Barack's trying to push it down the highway. Ooh, help, Michelle. She's like, Aah! You've seen those guns. <laughs> That's why I think they give you a chef who'll make you whatever you want anytime, day or night, in the White House to take the sting out of the sucking. <laughs> Can't you see Brock shuffling to the White House kitchen at 3 a.m.? Shuffle, shuffle, man, everybody hates me. <laughs> Chef's like, would a peanut butter and jelly sandwich make it better? <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> Can you cut the crust off? Slow down, Negro, slow down. That is second term. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, he sucks. That's just how it is to be the president. But then Brock gets all this other criticism that no other president's ever gotten in the history of the American presidency. Every time, you see, you turn on the TV, there's those weird white people Tea Party members. When I criticize the white people, I don't mean you white people, all right? I mean your friends and family, all right? <laughs> I should have said that sooner. But you see all those weird, squirrely white people on TV like, Barack Obama's a leftist, socialist, meltic Muslim! <laughs> Every time I hear that, I'm like, man, I wish. <laughs> I, that would be awesome. I don't care what your politics are. Thank you, one guy, for clapping right there. I don't care what your politics are. That would be amazing if America's first black president was a leftist, socialist, militant Muslim. Oh, my God. The press conferences alone would be pay-per-view. <laughs> All he wears is baby blue turtlenecks and dashikis, long black leather jackets, those bullet belts like you see from the movies. Got a rifle on his back at all times. Big nappy Jackson 5 afro. Black beret tilted off to the side. No pants. It's the leftist part. There's a wicker chair in the Oval Office. An actual real live Black Panther. <laughs> Press conferences are short. He just walks with the microphone. Black power fist and walks away. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a black president. Even black people could be afraid of. <laughs> That's not the black guy we got. Thank you, that section, for clapping. You know, and now we got the election coming up. I'm so mad at the Republicans and the GOP, not for the usual reasons. I'm mad. I wanted Brock to have to work for my vote this time, but you saw the primaries. It was like they had four years to come with one legitimate candidate running against America's first black president. That shouldn't be hard. And you saw the primaries. It's like a parade of Batman villains. What the hell is this? <laughs> And not the good Christian Bale Batman villains. This is like Adam West Batman villains. <laughs> Herman Cain's the pizza man. <laughs> Michelle Bachman's Two-Face. Both faces crazy. <laughs> Rick Santorum's myth are frothy. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Newt Gingrich as the Gingrich. What is this, Harry Potter? <laughs> and now we're down to the two choices. You know, Mitt, uh, what, Mitt Romney versus uh, Barack Obama. That's uh, going to be a hard choice for America. 
And I don't mean America where you and I live. I mean America <laughs> where our families live. <laughs> That's going to be a hard choice for America because it's a Mormon versus a black guy. And a lot of America doesn't like either one of those things. <laughs> like Mormon versus black guy. Uh, 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 uh. It's like aliens versus predator. Uh, <laughs> what am I going to do? It's something I hate versus something I don't understand. <laughs> They're like, OK, talk it through. OK, black guys are good at singing and dancing. I like to watch them on TV run and throw passes. Mormons wear crazy underwear. They baptize people after they die. And they think Jesus got here in the late 70s. Oh, damn it. I'm going to vote for the black fella. I'm going to vote for the black fella I think is a Muslim over the white guy I know is a Mormon. <laughs> and that's how Barack's going to win. <laughs> One person, yay. No, 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 mm -mm. One person, that's who wins. That's who wins that round. Just thinking about all this stuff a lot because, uh, you know, the world changes. Me and my wife, we had a baby recently. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my wife is white. I'm black. So, of course, the baby's an Arab. <laughs> that's where we got Arabs from, right? <laughs> black people and white people having sex in the desert. We all know that. But it's funny, when the baby was born, she came out white, like, but with my nose. I was like, really happy to see my nose. I'm like, what's going on here? Oh, there we go, there we go. That's the black mark of the black guy. And I wasn't upset that she came out looking white. I was like, cool, when she grows up, she can tell me what white people think about me when I leave the room, you know? <laughs> it's not good, Dad, it's not good. They have swayed me to their side. I'm getting a nose job. But it's funny, she didn't stay white, because like, you know, no baby stays the same colors when they're born, even babies born of one race parents. So now she's getting darker as each day goes by. I'm having fun charting her color progress, <laughs> using the cover of Michael Jackson CDs <laughs> in reverse chronological order. <laughs> yes, today she's dangerous. <laughs> it's never gonna be off the wall. Why am I caring about that? Ladies and gentlemen, that's my time. Good night, everybody.